Welcome to part two. If you guys go on to enjoy this installment of the series, make sure to slap that like button and also remember that the next part of this series is already up on the channel. So if you guys want to gain early access, go ahead and hit that member button and join now for the low, low price of 10 bucks. That said, enjoy. Hey Ross, sauce it up. But now that I'm here, I can finally tell you guys what we're doing today. Sakura looks at Kakashi and is like, what are you doing with those bells, Kakashi sensei? And Kakashi would eye smile at her before then saying that's exactly what I was about to explain. Look, here's the deal. You guys have until 12 a.m. at noon to take these bells off of me. You guys can use any means necessary. You guys can try to kill me and I advise you do or else you're not going to get anywhere near the bells. Two of you are only going to be allowed to pass one of you will be sent back to the academy and sakura naruto and sasuke would all immediately realize that this is definitely serious and all three of them would pretty much begin to mentally prepare themselves for the battle that's to come right all with the exception of naruto who would pretty much be told by kurama himself inside of his mindscape that this is all a test to find if they are good teammates so the point of this exam is pretty much to get them to use teamwork to get the bells, not to actually take the bells, saying that most people would never even be able to get close to the bells, that it's about teamwork, not about actually completing the task. And after Kurama tells that to Naruto, Naruto smirks, knowing what he has to do now. Naruto would immediately go towards the direction of Sasuke and Sakura, and he would try to get Sasuke to work together with him to try to get the bells. He would ask Sakura if she's willing, and Sakura would say, well, I mean, if Sasuke is okay with it, and the second that Naruto would go to ask Sasuke, Sasuke would immediately pull a get out of my way, Naruto. I'm gonna get those bells by myself. Naruto tries to explain to Sasuke that he doesn't understand that the point of this is to... But Sasuke cuts him off and pretty much ends up just running off towards the direction of Kakashi, trying to blindly and aimlessly take those bells from him. He rushes in with a lion's barrage, followed by a fireball jutsu, and he would pretty much try to get Kakashi off guard, which he would quickly realize is not going to be happening. Sasuke, even though he is pretty talented for a genin, is nowhere near the level of Kakashi when he's not even trying, so Kakashi would simply stomp on Sasuke bury him in the ground, Sakura would come trying to help him, and seeing Sasuke's head in the ground, she would immediately pass out. Naruto, after seeing this, would decide that the only thing he can do now is fight, I guess. So, what does Naruto do? He immediately uses the body flicker to get right behind Kakashi and try to snag the bell. He touches it slightly, but Kakashi would get out of the way and kick Naruto square in the face sending him crashing into a tree leading naruto to hold his face and be like Ugh! as he looks back up at kakashi and kakashi's like hey there what you doing and naruto would just look back at kakashi and be like okay fine you want to play these games we'll play and naruto after this would literally go on to close his eyes as he then taps into the power of kurama his eyes turning a crimson like color and looking at the direction of kakashi as kakashi would say what the and naruto would blitz at him and snag the bells right he snags him so fast before kakashi could even have whipped, whipped out his sharingan and naruto just has them in his hands right but Kakashi would turn into smoke, and so would the bells. And Kakashi, who was off somewhere else reading the reading his Makeout Paradise series, would realize that he better get serious. So he steps out with the Sharingan, and he rushes in at the direction of Kakashi, with both of them throwing Taijutsu attacks, and Naruto saying, Fine! You want to play hard to get? How's this? As he simply jumps up into the air and says, Earth style! 
Earth Dome Jutsu as a gigantic Earth Dome would appear in front of Kakashi and Kakashi would find an opening at the top as it was forming. Kakashi would jump up using it to already pierce right through it and after this he would see Naruto in the air as Naruto would say Fire Phoenix style uh, uh, or no Fire style Fire Phoenix Jutsu as a gigantic Phoenix like creature would rush at him so fast that Kakashi would not have enough time to react and he would have to use the substitution Jutsu. After this, when Kakashi is about to land on the ground and get some open space, Naruto would say water style, uh, water submerging jutsu or something like that, right? He would pretty much just flood the entire area and Kakashi would be submerged underneath a ton of water, leading to Kakashi not being able to get stable footing and Kakashi to actually slip up and lead Naruto to actually blitzing in and almost grabbing the bell. Had it not been for the fact that Kakashi would pretty much in this water would activate a Chidori and he would do so after using his substitution jutsu. So when Naruto lunged into the water, he got electric electrocuted by all that water as if electric eels had just gotten all over him, right? Kakashi looks back at the defeated Naruto and he would wonder how in the world he was able to access that strange power, like that demon's power should not be accessible to anybody, like how did Naruto do that? But he doesn't have time to ponder on that and instead what he actually ends up doing is tying Naruto to the tree. Once he does this, Sakura and Sasuke a couple of minutes later would appear next to him and they would both actually get food. It's at this moment that Kakashi would wait by the trees and pretty much begin to observe what they're going to do. Naruto looks to the direction of Sasuke and tells him that they have to work together. Sasuke looks at Naruto as Naruto summit growls and Naruto looks at him and he says we have to work together Sasuke I just tried my hardest and I couldn't even get close to those bells Sasuke we all need to work together that's the only way we're gonna get those bells I can go back to the academy but you two need to get the bells someone needs to pass at the very least all three of us can't go back and Sasuke looks at Naruto and says, so you'll stay back for me to pass. Naruto looks at him and says, of course I will. With his stomach growling again and saying, but I need some food. As you know, he gets a little shy and Sasuke is like, oh, I'm not going to spoon feed you. But he pretty much ends up having to do it. And Naruto eats a bit, leading to Kakashi coming out of the bushes and being like, you, you passed. Right. And suddenly the team is shocked and this is all immediately followed up by about two weeks worth of D-rank missions. Now, D-rank missions consisting of doing people's laundries, walking old ladies down the street, catching cats that ran away. It'd be very, very tragic. Weeding somebody's backyard. Those are the missions that they're doing. And it's very sad, but it is what it is, right? But all of that out of the way, what pretty much ends up happening after this is Naruto would finally speak up and ask for a C rank mission. Hiruzen after seeing the hard work that they put in and the ranking that Naruto is and how powerful he truly is, he would decide that there would definitely be no harm into letting Naruto try to complete a C rank mission. Not thinking that Naruto would actually be able to go through with it completely, but Hiruzen will be severely shocked. He would give them the scene rake mission of guarding Tazuna the bridge builder and the very next day all of them would meet by the bridge getting ready to pretty much embark on this said quest right. They end up making their way towards the land of the waves and Tazuna would pretty much introduce himself to the team and all of them would walk forth. About an hour would go by and it's at this point that essentially the two demon brothers of the you know of the random village that they're from would pop up and begin to essentially try to attack at Tazuna. This happens just like it does in the original, with Kakashi pretty much faking his own death and Sasuke lunging in at one of the demon brothers to essentially protect the bridge builder. Naruto's instincts would kick in and immediately Naruto would kill one of the members of the demon, uh, one of the demon brothers, or sorry, he wouldn't kill him, but he would um, pretty much... How do I? He he would restrain him. Yeah, that's the word. Sorry, I mentally zoned out for a second. He would pretty much restrain the demon brother, and after this, Kakashi would reveal himself, only to pretty much begin to question Tazuna, who would then go on to guilt trip them into completing the mission. It's pretty funny, but it is what it is, right? Eventually, a couple of hours would go by, and it's at this moment that they all are encountered by one of the legendary swordsmen of the mist, Zabuza Momochi. 
After this happens, Zabuza throws his sword at the direction of the team, and he then appears to do his introduction that he would in canon. The Kakashi vs Zabuza fight happens just like it does in the original, and once he's actually captured by Zabuza, Naruto instead of creating a plan with Sasuke would simply decide that it's about time that he did something. So Naruto rushes towards the direction of the water and says twin dragon jutsu as two water dragons appear from the water and lunge at the direction of Zabuza, leading Zabuza to have to have to let go of the water prison jutsu, wondering to himself how a Genin is able to perform a high level jutsu such as the water dragon jutsu, that that kind of jutsu should not be performed by a Genin, much less some kid that's probably on his first mission. He's absolutely, like, the dude is flabbergasted pretty much, and he's just wondering how in the world this Genin was able to even accomplish anything close to this. By the way, guys, sorry if you guys hear, like, these strange noises like this, but it's just because I'm messing around with the water bottle while I'm recording. Granted, I probably shouldn't be doing that, so I'm gonna put it down, but yeah, that, that was the strange little noises you guys kept hearing. Anyways, though, what pretty much ends up happening following this is we get a two-on-one where Naruto and Kakashi go full out on Zabuza, and they're pretty much just having the sound effects in the background of fight back, fight back, you know what I mean, in the background as Zabuza is getting absolutely curb stomped by them and eventually would get saved by Haku himself, who ends up saying that he's a mist tracking ninja. After this happens, we basically get a situation where Naruto and Sasuke are both forced to drag Kakashi back to the village. Now, obviously Naruto and Sasuke would both be carrying him at first, but Naruto would just decide that it would be a lot easier to just, as he creates shadow clones, and the shadow clones proceed to carry Kakashi back to Tazuna's house. They arrive only to be greeted by Inari, the snub-nosed brat, who would go on to tell them that there's no point in them being here, that they're only gonna die. And this would lead Naruto to get kind of irritated, but he realizes he's just a kid, he doesn't know what he's talking about, and so he would go outside for a moment of fresh air. In the woods, Kurama would tell Naruto that his performance out there today was kind of sloppy, that before, he would have performed way better than he did today, with Naruto saying that he has something on his mind, and Kurama would ask him exactly what that is. Naruto would ask Kurama a simple question, which would actually cause Kurama to stop and think about it as well. And Naruto would ask Kurama why he felt the need to inject this chakra into Kushina. Kurama would pretty much stop to think about this for a second and think about his response, as Kurama would say, Kid, you're not gonna like the reason, but there's no reason for me to lie to you. At the beginning, I did it to be petty to your mother and father. I was a Jinchur I was I was the beast hidden inside of them as they were the Jinchurikis, and practically I hated being there. I wanted to be free, not restricted to some somebody not restricted to be somebody's um a Juby or a Jinchuriki. It's not what I wanted. So to be petty, I injected a lot of my chakra into you when you were being born, and that's how you became one third of my son. Naruto looks up at Kurama and I just ask him one simple question. I know that that was your intentions at first, but what are they now? Kurama laughs before letting out <laughs> to lead you down a good path, kid. What else would I ever want for my son? But Naruto would simply smile and pretty much say, that's what I thought. I'm glad that that was really the answer you gave me, Kurama. I was starting to get worried there for a second. He gives him his classic cheesy smile and Kurama would, you know, pretty much just bump fists with Naruto as Naruto just goes back into the real world and Sasuke is looking at him behind a tree with Naruto simply saying, well, I'm glad Kurama's not betraying me. And Sasuke after hearing this would be like, who's Kurama? But Naruto would begin walking past and he would notice that Sasuke is nearby, going on to ask Sasuke what he's doing there with Sasuke asking that he could say the same thing, and Naruto would simply say that he was simply out here to catch some fresh air and maybe train a little bit, but he got hungry so he's heading back. Sasuke would say, I bet he did get hungry, but uh, who's Kurama? And Naruto after hearing this from Sasuke would simply say, oh, it's my imaginary friend. Sasuke would say, imaginary friend? And Naruto would laugh before saying, of course it's not an imaginary friend, dude. 
It's somebody, but somebody that's none of your business. Sasuke would get angry after hearing this from Naruto and would tell him that he better tell him. But Naruto says that he has his secrets and he has some as well. And to just leave it at that. Sasuke after this would pretty much grit his teeth knowing that he's not going to just be able to physically force it out of Naruto. So he simply has to sit there and just let Naruto do whatever he wants. Eventually what would happen though is pretty much the next day would roll around and more days would come until eventually Kakashi would find himself more than fine to operate on the mission, which would essentially just lead the entire squad to pretty much get ready for the attack that Zabuza was going to be having on them, with Kakashi knowing that Zabuza is most likely not dead. Eventually that day would roll around and things would pretty much play out just like they would in canon up until the point when Sasuke begins to get trapped by the ice prison jutsu. In the original, Naruto would have jumped inside of this said ice prison jutsu and would have had to have been getting impaled by these by these Senbon as well as Sasuke to even get close to defeating Haku, right? That's pretty much the situation that they found themselves in canon. But this time around, things are a little bit different, because Naruto now has access to one entire tale of the QB's power, which means that he's easily going to be able to keep up with Haku. He's able to easily smash the ice crystal mirrors and quickly be able to pretty much punch Haku into submission with these... I mean, these insanely fast and powerful hits that he would land on him, which would lead for Haku to be taken out of the equation and then eventually leap into the way of, uh, just, oh my god, I, I hate when this happens, Kakashi's Chidori, right? He would leap in the way of it, leading to the same situation that happens in canon with Naruto's Tak no Jutsu legendary moment and Gato and his men being savagely killed by the legend himself. Um, uh, Zabuza, right? <laughs> Zabuza himself would rush in there, kill them all, and after this, the mission would be completed, leading to Team 7 returning to Konoha.